Welcome back to Earth Star Observatory. I'm Lily Walker, and I'm an astrologer and a religious educator practicing classical astrology from the foundation of esoteric studies and the perennial wisdom teachings. And today I'm here to offer the third part in the video series on Ivan the Terrible and forecasting the time of his death. Today, we're going to take a look at Ivan's natal chart and look through his biographical information in conjunction with that natal chart. Okay, so let's share the chart. Okay, so this is the section on the natal chart and biographical information of Ivan the Terrible. Um, the first thing we notice is the image of Ivan's natal chart here, which you may want to refer back to as we talk through the information. And the first thing we notice about Ivan's natal chart is that his ascendant is at 14 degrees Aquarius. Now, this is an important degree in Aquarius because it's just almost right at the cross quarter point in February, um, which in the pagan tradition is Imbolic, and um, the Tibetan Buddhist tradition is Losar. And we understand that it's the time when the waters of the year are like for a new year, are poured into the cup to renew the youth of the gods. It's important in esoteric studies because it's one of the four wheels of Ezekiel's chariot. Um, and so the cross quarter days. And so it's an important point. And Ivan's degree is just one degree, or his ascendant degree is just one degree away from that cross quarter point at Imbolic. Now, this um, point here is ruled by his Saturn, his fifth house Saturn here in Gemini, because Saturn is the ruler of Aquarius. And it's also in the terms of this Jupiter here in Libra, which we'll get to talking about uh, quite a bit more. So here we go. In describing Ivan the Terrible, Gary Lockman writes, there's something of the grand noir about him, a darkness that comes through in Sergei Eisenstein's film, Ivan the Terrible, 1944. But even after we allow for exaggerated and even invented tales of atrocities by contemporaries wanting to blacken his name, the 16th century equivalent of fake news and alternative facts, even enough evidence remains to recognize that he's not exactly the victim of a smear campaign. Even if it is true that his sobriquet, the terrible, is a mistranslation of the Russian, which actually translates to the dreaded. Ivan IV was sufficiently cruel and ruthless in maintaining his authority and dominance to qualify as one of Colin Wilson's right men. These indivi are individuals, there are right women too, who under no circumstance will admit to being wrong and who, if their authority is challenged, will wreak to them a perfectly justifiable holy vengeance on those who oppose their will. Now, this is such a great quote to characterize Ivan, and it fits so well with this natal chart, not only the Aquarius rising, which we're getting to, but also that terms, the terms ruled by Jupiter, as we'll see that Libra placement is all about holy vengeance and justice for the goddess. So Ivan's characterization as a right man finds testimony in his Aquarius ascendant. Aquarius is often seen as a know-it-all, who is somewhat cold and that they tend to care more about the truth than your feelings. Aquarius is known to be unorthodox, rebellious, and intellectually oriented, and is sometimes characterized as a hermit. With the ascendant in the terms of Jupiter, this position is directed by philosophical and religious belief. In Ivan's case, this rebellious nature of unorthodoxy is actually an impulse for the Russian Orthodox Church to be more orthodox than the Eastern Orthodox Church, who was understood to be punished for its agreement to unify with the Vatican at the Council of Florence. His would be a tendency towards cold intellectual theory aimed at a more rigid and conservative version of the faith being morally right and with him being its right man. 
His ascendant in the terms of ninth house Jupiter and Libra, so his body, character, and appearance are those of a right man who delights in rigidly enforcing limits that conform situations and information to his viewpoint with regard to religious beliefs about justice and right relationship. With the placement directed by Jupiter, Ivan's right man beliefs center around restoring justice and beauty to the transcendent goddess. Notice Ivan's Sun-Mars conjunction in the eighth house of Virgo. With his son, Ivan brings his vitality of his life force and his heart to this house. And with Mars, he brings an extremely sharp, particular and vengeful spark of aggression. The position of Mars so close to the sun burns and fires the energy, making it overly hot. Mars conjunct the sun makes his vital life force explosive, quick tempered and highly agitated. Ivan both draws vitality from and quickly spins what vitality he has through the souped up and trigger happy action of his Mars. In the eighth house, this impulse often finds expression in issues involving fears, open enemies, death, and inheritance. In other words, the kingdom he inherited from his father and all of the intrigue of court life that accompanies it. As a testimony to this attribute of his character, it is noted in an Ivan the Terrible documentary that lack of impulse control and fits of rage were always his biggest problem. This speaks to his Mars-Sun conjunction. Both Mars and the Sun are hot, dry planets. The Earth sign of Virgo is cold and dry. Earth is a yin element, and this tempers Ivan's placement, making it turn more inward, pulled back, contracted, cautious, and retreating. This elemental consideration begins to speak to the religious nature in which Ivan's impulse to action most often found its expression, and also to Ivan's reliance on the inward, transcendent aspect of the goddess. The ruler of Virgo, the Virgin Mary, is Ivan's 29 degree Leo Mercury, significator for his crown. Okay, because this placement is in Virgo, it's ruled by Mercury, and Ivan's Mercury is in Leo at 29 degrees retrograde in the seventh house. So in addition to the Sun-Mars conjunction being tempered somewhat by its placement in Virgo, it is also tempered by its bound lord, Venus, meaning that she directs their activity. Venus is in, the, is in dignity of her domicile in the ninth house. This speaks well for Ivan's plight because Venus is really strong and has what she needs to accomplish her tasks. In addition, Venus is perfectly conjunct the placement of Algorab or Corvus in 1530. This is one of the 15 magical Bohemian fixed stars and is of weighted importance in the chart. It's actually the only Bohemian chart that shows up, um, star that shows up in Ivan's chart. So it's really is very important, especially for a king. As Christopher Warnock writes in Fixed Star, Sign, and Constellation Magic, the effect of Corvus is to make people angry, hateful, daring, and evil speaking, and which causes wicked dreams. As Bernadette Brady writes in Brady's Book of Fixed Stars, the raven stands on the back of the hydra, and as legend has it, that the hydra stops the raven from drinking from the cup in punishment for failing to fulfill a duty to Apollo. That cup would be Aquarius where his ascendant is, right? The story from Greek mythology relates that Apollo tasked the raven, white in color, to watch over his lover, Coronis. During his watch, Coronis fell in love with a mortal. When the raven told Apollo the news, Apollo was furious and he scorched the raven in his wrath and turned the raven's feathers black. Apollo, representing the seven colors of the rainbow light emanating from the sun, the seven notes, and the seven chakras, urges his beloveds to keep their love for the divine fresh and foremost in their minds, as opposed to turning their love and adoration towards the material reification of the manifest world. 
Corvus, having been punished for neglecting to prevent Coronis from this transgression, responds as an archetype that squawks, the speaker of inflammatory, violent, judgmental, and harsh words aimed at steering the listener back to the true course, or love for the rainbow light and not for the flesh. All of this works together as testimony to Ivan's driving ambition and takeaway meaning of life being a fury and hailstorm of justice aimed in devoted service to the transcendent mother goddess and his desire to enforce justice on her behalf. We see these ninth house Libra placements bear testimony in Ivan's biography with the death of his mother at age eight and her suspected poisoning, and the effect that this had on Ivan and the sense through which he viewed himself, his sole mission, and this world. The moon, representing the mother, is in his ninth house, as is Jupiter, significator of justice. In addition, we see testimony to the death of Ivan's father at age three in the eighth house with Mars at a two degree conjunction with his son. The son typically represents the father in the natal chart and taking secondary progressions into account or orary calculations, if we assign one degree to each year of life, then that conjunction representing the killing of the father, Mars conjunct the son, Mars is like a uh, melee fight conjunct the son, which represents the father, especially a father who's a king, um, that um, the killing of the father would ripen in about two years because it's a two year degree separation. By primary direction, we notice that Ivan's midheaven, representing his public reputation and career, directs into the bounds of Mercury around the time of August 20th, 1533. This is the year that Ivan's father died and named him Grand Prince of Moscow. Taking a look at Ivan's chart as a whole, Ivan's Mercury is a likely significator for his crown as it is in the seventh house of Leo at 29 degrees retrograde. So what I'm saying here is that Ivan's midheaven, which is the, the um, noon point of the chart representing his public reputation directs but like directs through the bounds into the terms of mercury which ends up significating his crown in the year that his father dies so we are recognized that there'll be a um a, a shift in the way that he's seen and his public reputation that year okay it indicates that to us in predictive astrology which is kind of our topic here okay and so I sort of think, you know, just the orary calculations um, do give us some indication, but by primary direction, we see that we really hone in that science uh, to be the exact year that his father died, okay? So as we're talking about, it directs into the bounds of Mercury, and Mercury's in his seventh house retrograde in Leo, okay? So Leo is the traditional sign that we look to for the king, and the sun, the ruler of Leo, is the planet we look to for the king. Notice that Ivan's son is not in Leo, but rather caught in the misfortune of his vengeful service to the transcendent goddess. However, his Mercury and retrograde is at the anoretic glitching degree of 29 degrees in Leo as a backtracking last minute remembrance. Wait, I almost forgot my crown. We will see later that Mercury is a key player in many of the pivotal events in his life related to the state of the crown. In addition, we see a very beautiful exalted Venus in the ninth house of Libra in the terms of Mercury, which means that she is directed by his 29 degree Mercury retrograde in Leo or the significator of his crown. Note that we have also said above that Venus directs the Sun and Mars conjunction. So these things work together to make not only his vitality and volition to be governed by the religious quest for justice and right relationship with the goddess, but that relationship itself is governed by his duty to the crown. The director of Venus, Mercury, 
being in the seventh house of relationships speaks to Ivan's almost matrimonial sense of duty here. It is a sense of duty tinged by religious fervor and might have even had romantic leanings in the way he inwardly defined his relationship with the transcendent goddess in the form of Mother Mary. We also notice in Ivan's natal chart that his Saturn in Gemini in the fifth house speaks to the heavy burden placed on him in childhood and the struggle of himself and his younger brother by the hand of the ruling elite or boyers. After the death of his mother, Ivan and his brother were left on their own in a very cruel and cold world of the Russian court. Ivan was neglected and abused by the ruling elites or boyers who his care was entrusted to. He suffered a very hard childhood as did his brother. The square between that Saturn and his son speaks to the joy he later found in punishing and torturing the boyers. And the trying to his moon suggests he truly felt his actions to be a beautiful divine justice and in some way retribution and defense of his mother and the goddess as mother Mary in general. Where the Sun-Mars conjunction is the executor of punishment, it is the square from Saturn and the fifth house that has Ivan deriving joy from this task. He is noted to have enjoyed brainstorming various forms of corporal punishment and torture. In one Ivan the Terrible film, it is related that he obtained building specs and plans for Leonardo da Vinci's war machines and built many of them. The Saturn in the fifth builds and brings form. The trickster Gemini leans towards the malevolent polarity and the square to the sun has Ivan resolving the obstacles of his eighth house misfortune by way of his fifth house placement. Note that an alternative expression of this placement might have seen Ivan delighting in painting book of the dead sort of scrolls, scrolls in a monastery building an orphanage or collecting a occult information about Mother Mary, or there were plenty of other ways this placement, especially if remediated, could have expressed. The fifth house is known to be the house of romance, and this speaks to the fact that his queen, Anastasia, while alive, was able to remediate the placement. In fact, oh, the fact that Mercury, who had his domicile in Gemini and Virgo is a trickster is well documented in classical literature. Mercury is the only planet that switches sect depending on his position in relationship to the sun and whose role as a benefic or malefic is determined by his sect position in the chart. Ivan's Mercury is technically in sect. That fact does not, however, help Ivan or his Mercury ruled Saturn is express in a benefic way, but it might be evidence that it could have. As the following antidotes illustrate, Ivan's Gemini Saturn is expressed in very vicious and twisted ways. There's a story about Ivan that as he came of age, a crucial turning point in his relationship with the boyers came when, upon an altercation, Ivan released his dogs on the offending boyers who were torn limb from limb. As the story goes, Ivan delighted in the scene and later took the dog head as a totem symbol for his personal bodyguard. As Wikipedia relates, Ivan was inspired by the Archangel Michael and his sacred right and duty to carry out divine punishment. Ivan the Terrible delighted in recreating the torments of hell which included drowning and roasting people alive or torturing victims with boiling or freezing water. As God's representative on earth, Ivan took seriously what he understood to be his sacred right and duty to punish, directed by that ninth house Venus. As Ivan's midheaven, representing his public reputation and career in Sagittarius, a fire sign, with Archangel Michael representing the element of fire. 
right? So we see some testimony here to Ivan's midheaven is in Sagittarius, a fire sign. Uh, Sagittarius is all about the higher mind and higher philosophy and also is a real player, right? Like Sagittarius is ready to play ball. And um, we can see testimony here to Ivan, you know, being seen as a, a punisher. This placement is ruled by Jupiter in the ninth house, again, like his ascendant, and is in the terms of Venus, again, speaking to Ivan's career, being a quest for justice, bedazzled by the magical star Corvus. Okay, so this section is on his marriage to Anastasia. And we can see here, and you might want to come back and reference this, this is the transit chart for the day that he got married to Anastasia. Okay. So at the age of 16, Ivan was crowned czar and married his first wife and what seems to have been his saving grace and love of his life, Anastasia Romanov. Anastasia's birth data is not available. So we're not able to look at the relationship aspects between the couple. However, we are able to see an astrological activation in Ivan's chart on the day they were married. According to a teaching offered by Robert Blasky in his volume four of Astrology, A Language for Life, re titled Relationship Analysis, an astrologer can predict with certainty a marriage for a never married person using a part of marriage degree. If this degree was to be conjoined by transit to the ruler of the seventh, or if the ruler of the seventh were to progress to a conjunction with this degree, an astrologer could predict this with confidence. The formula given by Blasky to calculate the part of marriage filled in for Ivan is as follows. Now this is using a 360 degree circle. Ivan's ascendant is 314 degrees. His descendant is 134 degrees. Subtract his Venus at 186 degrees gives us 262, which is 22 degrees of Sagittarius. And now taking a look at the transits on February 3rd, 1547, the day he married his first wife, Anastasia, Mercury, significator of his crown and ruler of his seventh house was in retrograde, as it is in the natal chart, in Aquarius, perfectly trying his part, it's sextile, perfectly sextile his part of marriage at 22 degrees Sagittarius. Now let's just look at this for a second. So here's Mercury, ruler of the seventh house, nearly conjunct the sun, nearly conjunct Jupiter. It's a really big conjunction there. You see that? Remember Jupiter is the ruler of that justice of beauty there too. Okay, and, um, and it's all, you know, just past his ascendant as well, but this 22 degrees Mercury, perfectly sextile to his part of marriage here in the 11th house. So cool. So, unfortunately, when Anastasia died in 1560, Ivan suffered a breakdown and was convinced that she had been poisoned, as his mother was. Ivan became paranoid, angry, and volatile. He established a personal guard of terrifying mercenaries who rode horses with dog heads tied on them. The band was called the Oprikni, and they were terrifyingly wrathful and violent. The Oprikni did the bidding of Ivan the Terrible, and that bidding was twisted, gruesome, and awful. Notice that we see testimony to Ivan's eighth house son and Mars in the house of death and misfortune, directed by his ninth house Venus, driving him to exact justice for the goddess by way of the wicked square from his fifth house Saturn that delights in exacting revenge and torture in this story. The death of Ivan's wife, as it was with that of his mother, bears testimony in this chord. Let's look at that a little more careful because that was a lot of astrological words. So we see Ivan's eighth house sun Mars conjunction here in the house of death and misfortune because that's the eighth house, the house of death and misfortune. We see 
that directed by his ninth house Venus here, right? Um, driving him to exact justice, justice Libra, justice, you know, uh, Jupiter here, right? And, you know, justice Venus, the beauty of right relationship and, you know, making that right and beautiful. Venus is in her domicile here in Libra, right? Conjunct that Corvus too, who's going to squawk about it. So um, we see all of that directing this placement here, right? And we see this placement square to this Saturn here, okay? So um, driving, directed by his ninth house Venus, driving him to exact justice for the goddess by way of the wicked square from his fifth house Saturn in Gemini that delights in exacting revenge and torture in this story. So he creates a band of mercenaries, you know, uh, to, as his joy and to protect, you know, him and his fun, right? He has a good time cr creating this band of mercenaries or bodyguard um, that have brooms to sweep out the trash and dog heads in order to, um, I can't remember what that signifies beyond the um, original story where he set the dog on, his, on the voyeur. Okay, so anyway, we also see that the death of his wife along with the death of his mother. See, there, you know, find testimony in this chord as it relates together, okay? So now let's take a brief look at, um, oh, here's a picture of the Oprichni. I'm sorry, I'm destroying all of the last names in Russian in this video. They look youthful, exuberant, Mercury-like, you know? Okay, so as the final section of this biographical information section, we're going to take a look at the death of Ivan's son and heir. Um, this is a transit chart for the day that Ivan killed his son on November 16th, 1581 in Moscow, Russia. So on November 16th, 1581, there came the pivotal tragedy of Ivan's life. The morning of the, this tragedy, Ivan's daughter-in-law, or his son's wife, appeared in what Ivan considered to be immodest clothing, and he beat her. The beating caused her to miscarry her child. It is at this point that Ivan's son and heir approached his father in an aggressive manner, and in the midst of a heated argument, Ivan swung his scepter, or a pointed staff, a jewel-encrusted pointed staff, and delivered a fatal blow to his son upon the head. We may notice here again that there's testimony to this promise in Ivan's fifth house of Gemini, Gemini ruled by his Mercury retrograde and co-present with Saturn. Mercury representing his crown and his role as king and the malefic Saturn representing hardship, sorrow, and death in the house, in his fifth house of joy, bliss, creativity, romance, and children. Right, so the fifth house is also the house of children. And we see this Saturn here uh, in the fifth house. So it kind of has a natal promise there in some ways of hardship in this house. But, you know, Saturn is also the grim reaper uh, and represents death and cutting things off. And so Saturn is the top sphere before we, you know, get to the higher realms of the geocentric spheres. And so, and it's also, as I'm saying here, that, you know, this house of Gemini is ruled by Mercury, which is his crown, okay, which is, you know, his placement for his crown and king. On this fateful day, we see Saturn at 22 degrees Aquarius by transit square his part of marriage. So right there where, where Mercury was on the day of his marriage, now today, in this day, we have Saturn right there in that exact spot. Um, up here in a sextile aspect to this part of marriage. So making the exact same formation, but instead of it being Mercury to the part of marriage, it's Saturn to the part of marriage. And, and you know, I, Ivan Saturn is this fifth house placement, right? So among other notable aspects in his chart, like Mercury on his midheaven, see Mercury conjunct his midheaven here, um, which means that there'll be news about his public reputation um, and it's square his natal sun. So we can see Mercury here, square to his natal sun. Uh, 
which, you know, means that there's an obstacle, you know, speaking, um, you know, something coming up, some hard news related to who he is and, and the, his public reputation. And okay, so Venus by transit is in the 12th house, square her natal position. So we see Venus here in the 12th house, square to her natal position. So 12th house is the house of hidden enemies and things that we don't see coming and kind of square to, you know, she's got this really um, exalted position in the natal position, but here she kind you know, it's kind of like, mm, she doesn't fulfill that natal promise and instead is kind of showing up as something he didn't expect in, in, a, in, an, in another square and the moon crossing his descendant in Leo, um, which is, uh, you know, the moon is nurturing and, and the sign of mothering and crossing the descendant is kind of like the death point of the day. It's the fall of the sun. And so that moon crossing over his descendant, you know, that there's something about his ability to nurture and mother <laughs> that kind of didn't go so well that day. Um, all of this speaks testimony to, uh, to, of his beloved wife's son and her relationship to this child whom Ivan has just killed. By primary direction, Ivan's ascendant, representing his self, his body, his character and appearance, directed to a conjunction with his fifth house Saturn in late July of 1581. So this happened in November, but in July, a few months previous, his ascendant, this 14 degrees um, Aquarius directed to a conjunction with this Saturn. Okay. So that means that, you know, the way that he defines himself and sees himself and shows up in the world has made a conjunction to a very malefic aspect, you know, and the way he's defining himself might have a heavy burden now placed on it. And, you know, some, um, redefinition going on because of it. Um, this direction indicating that that Ivan, how he shows up in the world and his self-concept shifted to a heavy malefic fifth house placement by direction. It was a fourth house Taurus perfection year with Venus as Lord of the year, indicating both issues related to home and family because this, Taurus is ruler of the fourth house, right? Yeah. Fourth house perfection year. Um, as well as themes related to Ivan's quest for meaning with regard to justice and beauty and relationships, because it's ruler, she's ruler of the ninth house. So it's a Venus perfection right. year. So we see again, the fact that Venus is square to her natal placement here, the day this happens in the 12th house, bears um, additional import because she's the ruler of the year she's the lord of the year so anything involving venus in this year when we're when we look at the forecasting and we look at the charts for that year venus is one of the first things we look at because she's the lord of the year so her being in square to that position and then the house 12th house says it was something he didn't expect he didn't mean to it for that to happen his hidden enemy is his fits of rage right and the way he can't control his mars there in the eighth house okay moving on um okay so um here i have some pictures uh from art and again in in the publication all of the um all of the images are you know and the artists are listed with links to how you can get those they're all in the creative commons but here we have you know images of from art of ivan killing his son and here we have ivan's solar return chart for the year of 1581 right so in the predictive package we look at primary directions we look at perfection year but we also look at the solar return chart now, who's going to be important in this chart? Venus is, because she's the Lord of the year. So we see here that, uh, where is Venus in this chart? At 21 degrees in Virgo. Oh, in fall. So Venus is in fall that year. That tells us right away that there's not good. This might be a difficult year because Venus is at fall in Virgo. Okay, so uh, let's go through what I've written here because it'll be more systematic. Venus is Lord of the Year, conjunct Corvus. 
Mercury is conjunct natal Venus in the solar return chart with solar return Mars conjunct natal Jupiter applying to Mercury. Okay, so what does that mean? Let's look at it. Mercury is conjunct to natal Venus in the solar return chart. So you see Mercury here, right there on his natal Venus in the solar return chart. With solar return Mars, here, Mars there, applying to a conjunction with that Mercury, right? So you see right there that there is some, Mars is a malefic. So Mars make, applying to a conjunction with Mercury on top of that Lord of the Year in the natal chart means that there might be some bad news or something sort of bad happening, you know, there in this aspect related to his Venus. And also we see that Venus is Lord of the Year, right? And we've seen her, we saw in the transit chart. By transit, Mercury is applying to conjunction with Ivan's midheaven. Oh, we mentioned that in the last on the last chart. In that transit chart, Mercury was applying to a conjunction with Ivan's midheaven, and it was square to his natal sun and Mars in the eighth house on the day of his son's death. This square indicates news or communications that speak to major obstacles or conflicts related to Ivan's public reputation and career coming from his hot-tempered sun Mars conjunction in the area representing fear, death, intrigue, and inheritance. Venus is in the natal 12th house by transit on the day of Ivan's son death and square to her ninth house position. This speaks to hidden enemies and unthinking moments as well as injustice and accidents. And perhaps most telling, although not a planet used in the time of Ivan, on the day of Ivan's son's death, Uranus, the bringer of shocking upsets was conjunct his ascendant. So we see right here, Uranus, was that on the day of the death? Okay, let's go back and look at that. Uranus here, 15 degrees. See how close it was on the day of, 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 of the sun's death. Uranus was conjunct, that ascendant there. And we see even in the solar return chart, it was very close. Note that, that this ascendant has just directed into a conjunction with Saturn in the fifth and a malefic representing the death in the house of fun, play and children, and that Ivan did not intend to kill his son. It was an accident and that it came as a shocking upset to him and likely affected his self-concept and confidence in a heavy way. Uranus is also near the ascendant in the solar return chart. So as a final reflection on this chart, I would just like to say that Venus um, being the Lord of the year and her conjunction to the magical star Corvus, you know, you can kind of see that in action here as well, because Ivan was being a Corvid. He was being a pesky Corvid, as my friend Gary Caton says. And he was squawking at the, the daughter-in-law about her clothes and accidentally killed her and caused this big problem, right? And so Venus ruling the fourth house, perfection year, you know, of family and home. And, you know, you can see how all of these things relate. And in addition, you can see how much information we actually are able to pull out do with the additional forecasting techniques available in Ptolemy's predictive package um, beyond just progressions, um, secondary progressions, which are which what a lot of modern astrologers use to are a little bit different than primary directions. So uh, with that being said, I think that will be the end of this video and we will be ready to offer the last video in this series, which will be the death transits and forecasting the death of Ivan the Terrible. So uh, I hope to see you soon. And thanks for being here. If you are interested in getting a natal chart reading from me or a reading of uh, Revolutions Predictive Astrology, uh, please do visit my website at www.earthstarom.com. Please do like and subscribe. And again, thanks for being here and for the light you bring to the world. Bye, y'all.